Baker. The nine sacks, the 16 tackles for loss, and just you had to be pleased with that. You had to see that against that this is on Saturday. Oh yeah, any I mean. Anytime you get nine sacks and six MTFLs, but uh, you know it's a little bit more sweet when, when it's against your rival for sure. And, uh, you know, couldn't be more proud of, uh, of the way that uh, I thought we competed really, really hard on Saturday. Um, I thought we were by far the most physical team on the field uh, Saturday. Um, you know, it's going to be a tough ask again. You know, we're going to have to answer the same question this weekend against the Louisville team. But really proud of how they played last weekend. Coach told us about the team outdoors the year. Uh, obviously, he's heard him ask about his spirits and where they're kind of at. And obviously, Bourbon, you know, he doesn't mean to hurt him, but that's our frustration. And how do you guys kind of handle that? How does Bourbon move on? I'm sure it probably bothers him what happened to Bourbon. Yeah, I mean, first, you know, first part of your question, obviously, it's a huge, huge loss. I thought Bubba, you know, as, as I stood up here pretty much every week and was asked about it, he kept getting better and better and better and was becoming more and more a part of what we were doing defensively. So. Losing him, you know, especially the way we lost him is very unfortunate. Um, and it's just one of those freak deals, you know. Uh, it wasn't intentional. I, I don't I don't foresee it being an issue. You know, I'm sure Gervin feels bad about it, but at the same time, uh, you know, like I said, it's one of those freak deals that, you know, nobody nobody means to do, and I don't think any, any harm was, was meant by it. So I think Gervin will be fine. Hey Blake, uh, talk a little bit about Louisville. Uh, you know, you, you watch tape of them and they do some dynamic things offensively. I, I know they got up to like 60 against Wake Forest earlier this year. Uh, what kind of challenges do they present for you guys? Well, you know, first off, they're very committed to what they do. Uh, they are excellent in the run game. Um, their outside zone game is, is second to none. I think their offensive line is very good. Their left tackle is a potential first round draft pick. Their back is, is really, really good. He's got great vision. Uh, he's a one-cut guy that, um, you know, is very shifty. He's very elusive in there, and he, and, he, and he does a good job of, like I said, with his vision, finding finding the air that the offensive line creates. Uh, I think they, they have a really good slot receiver, um, you know, who's from, from down here, and, and uh, their outside receiver, number seven, is a really good player. So, you know, when you look at them personnel-wise, they're very talented, and then when you look at what they do schematically, um, you know, go, dating back to, to when he was App State, that's that's what they believe in, and that's what they do, and they do a really good job at, at running the football. With uh, with Shaq, obviously played really well. He was down on himself. I remember been mentioned, you know, at one point earlier. Is there any area where you think he's been especially more active or better? And in pass protection, how have Shaq and Pinkney done this year for you? Um, as far as pass... I, I don't mean pass protection, as far as pass coverage. Pass coverage? Yeah. No, they, they've both been excellent. Um, you know, really, I can't think of top, you know, off the top of my head, but I think they've been very good as far as pass rush. Uh, I really think Shaq, Dayton, probably back to... Probably after the Virginia Tech game, I think he's been a, he's been a different monster, you know, from a... Uh, from a preparation standpoint, I, I think he's he's done everything with a purpose from that point on. Uh, you just see a different fire in his eye when you're coaching him, uh, you know, in the classroom, but also on the field. Uh, he stepped up his leadership role significantly from that point, but uh, couldn't ask couldn't ask more from a young man than, than, than Shaq Cordman. I wouldn't trade him for anybody in the world. Uh, Coach Holmes, about those Sunday practices would be like 15 minutes and the guys just kind of do. I'm wondering who we might see on game days that's really making the biggest strides and impressing you the most this season uh, as far as scouts and who are you going to be really excited about going in next year? Well, I think the the, the young defensive linemen, um, you know, Jafari Harvey, obviously the, the three, three freshman defensive t uh, tackles that we talk about. Uh, Avery Huff is doing a, a very nice job. He's, he's like a big piece of Play-Doh. He's so raw, but he is he is freaky athletic. I think he, he has a chance to have a special career here when it's said and done. Um, and then on you know on the back end, uh, Christian Williams and Corey Couch, although they're playing on Saturdays, they get a lot of work. Keontre Smith is another guy to me off the top of my head that is doing some really good things. So, um, you know, I think the one thing about those young guys is they're, I think they're bought into what we're doing. When you talk about their attitude and their energy, they're uh, 
they're all really fun to be around, and they all play with, with great energy, even though, you know, it's a 15-minute Sunday night football deal. There, there's a spark about that, that group. You mentioned Cowtray Smith. Is, he's a guy, is he a guy that you can now envision um, moving into uh, that rotation of safety? Or you figure you'll keep it at three now? Well, I mean, he's yeah, he's going to get a lot more reps, you know, moving forward, um, and and it, it's all hands on deck. So, yeah, we're we're we're, we're counting on him to, to have to play a role. You know, it might be five snaps, it might be twenty five snaps. Um, you know, obviously that's that's how college football is. Uh, so his role will will increase. Like two things on Rousseau. When you and Manny and Stroud are sitting talking around, are there any, uh, or just talking among yourselves, are there any NFL defensive ends that you all see similarities with him to that you guys have mentioned? And was there a moment for you where you saw him live for the first time and said, this guy has special talent, whether it be something in a practice or in spring or whenever? I think uh, to answer the first part of your question, you know, there hasn't been specifically a guy we say, you know, from an NFL, you know, we talk about maybe players from the past year and, and, and uh, Kalas Campbell always, obviously comes up because of the height uh, and, and, the, and the reach, which not many, not many people possess those two things at, at defensive line or, or really anywhere in, in, in football. Um, you know, and then, it, you know, it's funny you ask that question. You always saw the ability. Even coming from last spring, you could see he has – he has some really, really God-given talents that, that uh, he does a great job utilizing. You know, like I just talked about, his length, the way he can bend, his motor. Uh, you know, there's there's not a lot of guys in college football that can do the things that he can do. And when you look at the way he, he has gathered a lot of his sacks, it has been through effort plays or him just being really long and reaching out like Inspector Gadget and <laughs> flipping a quarterback by the, by the hills. So... Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of that guy, man. He's come a long way in, in a short period of time, and he takes it all in stride. He's getting national recognition now, obviously, uh, and he's still the same Greg. He doesn't, he doesn't skip a beat. He's very humble, always smiling. Yes, sir, no, sir. There's, there's a lot of positives about Greg Rousseau. I know Greg gets a lot of national recognition, but so does uh, Jamar Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you teaching those dance moves? <laughs> Not me. What's like, what's like the film when you guys see those clips afterward? I'm wondering what that's like. Oh, uh, we we encourage it, you know, and and uh, you know, Coach Stroud's actually the one that teaches on those moves. I did ask him to, to dance for y'all after practice. He's he can get jiggy, but uh, no, he uh, Jalar Holly. Like I talked about that whole freshman group, but he just has a great personality, um, and he loves to dance. So, like I said, we encourage it. Right. Thank you.